Professor Malazim, you would be shocked. You would be shocked to hear that today the number is 161. The, see, these are the statistics I have received just now. And I'm taking care of the patients for the past one week, and all those patients are in the leaky phase. None of the patients we are admitting are the usual dengue fever. So it, they are all in the leaky phase. They are all the patients who require the critical 48 hours of monitoring. But the good news about it is that number one, it spreads due to mosquito. If we kill the mosquito, we can prevent the spread of the disease. So there is a limit as we know where to hit the, you know, uh, the uh, uh, evil in the bud. Number two, we can use mosquito repellents. Number three, we can, we can use all the preventive measures. Professor Khalid would be talking about that and everybody knows about it. Wearing uh, of mosquito repellents, prevention of uh, collection of uh, water and uh, the other reservoirs of the mosquito. And most importantly, there's an end to the disease. Unlike COVID and other diseases where the disease would go on and on and on. And we talked about the mild, moderate and severe stages of COVID. And we did not know when the critical phase of COVID would end. In contrast to that, we are lucky in way of dengue that we know it's going to last for 48 hours. So if we are vigilant over those 48 hours, which I'm sure Professor Mukhalid would be basically focusing upon, if we are vigilant in the monitoring of the patient, in giving the right amount of fluid, neither overhydrating nor underhydrating, and carefully um, uh, 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 monitoring the patient regarding output and the vitals, we can save the patient. And the most important part is the part, the role played by the timely referral by the family physicians. So I'm sure there are a number of family physicians on the group, or they might be learning, uh, listening to this uh, webinar later on. Please refer at the right moment when you pick up the warning signs which should be talked about by Professor Khalid. So I, I leave it over here, and we'll be open for any questions. Professor uh, Khalid, uh, Madam, at the, we will ask the question. Professor Khalid, have you solved the problem for sharing your? Okay, you can start it. Thank you very much, Dr. Bilkis. And uh, we all were working together. If I go back to the history, uh, the first case that is documented in Pakistan is back in 1996 in Karachi. And the first epidemic that I and my team faced in Lahore was 2006. At that time, I was working in FJMC, uh, and uh, that is Mother Institution of Dr. Balkis. And uh, we admitted about 65 patient in 2006. And I was wondering where is bleeding? Because as Dr. Belkis was telling, there was only three, four lines in our textbooks about den fever. Anyway, we don't have any test except uh, our hand was the our test. We put our hand like this. If we suck very refill test more than two seconds, we say dengue confirmed. And we don't have PCR, we don't have anti dengue IgM, IgG at that time. Then we faced second epidemic in Lahore in 2007, then eight, and then another major epidemic that was in 2010. And 11. the epidemic that Dr. Bilkis was discussing, 2011, that was the biggest epidemic that mankind ever faced because. In Gangaram, our FGMC, in my team, saw 1,7242 uh, patients in a small hospital, Gangaram. Oh. And same was the case in uh, Mu, Services, Jina, LGH. But anyway, uh, I'm going to the uh, right now, at that time, we were discussing that we have four serotypes, but right now, there are five serotypes. Remember, Whenever dengue mosquito bite a healthy person, the virus goes and attack our white blood cell. And 
it produce interferon and all the symptoms of dengue fever like headache fever myalgias these are because of that interferon and then bone marrow suppression and once this virus enters this is basically a spherical virus enveloped RNA and it has both structural as well as non-structural protein. Like nowadays we do NS1. This test is available since uh, 2011 with us. And this is the first antigen that is presented in blood and that we can uh, detect by our lab. And it is quite simple test that is present from day one and it can be uh, in our blood till day 18. But mostly um, we detect this test from day one to day five and from day three, the PCR and from day five onward, IgM antibodies. Remember, once IgM antibodies produced, they remain in our blood for about 90 days. Maximum it can present in up to six months. And remember, one one, is, one thing that is very important, uh, once we have IgM antibodies in our blood, we don't have second infection. So we are protected with that particular serotype. Let's, if I got uh, serotype one or genotype one infection, I will be protected with that and other serotype till the IgM is present in my blood. Once the IgM disappeared from my blood, I will be susceptible to other like genotype two, three, four, and five. And the IgG antibodies then, that uh, usually uh, appear in our blood from day seven onward, and they are lifelong. Because if we see the history of IgG, they are pre present in our blood for about 60 years of, so most of us, uh, have lifespan of around 60. Uh, so that's why we see that lifelong immunity with that particular type. So these are the thing. Then, so if you get a second infection, it is more severe than the primary one. As far as I do exactly remember in 2011, it was said that primary and secondary infection are dengue hemorrhagic fever, these are two separate entity. As this was discussed by our worthy team from Sri Lanka, Dr. Fernando, Dr. Tessera, and I was closely working with them at that time, uh, along with our most worthy professor, Faisal Masood, Allah Mia, and then in 2012, our team, our Pakistani team under the chairmanship of Professor Faisal Masood, they have got evidence that this is not a separate entity. It is rather the disease is same, but it is the secondary disease, which is more severe. So second time infection is more severe. So these are the things. Then what's about fever? Fever is present in about 90% of the cases. And if, if, for example, 10,000 people get infection, 9,000 will be asymptomatic. And symptomatic will be only 1,000. So only 10% of those will be symptomatic. And among these 1,000 patients, around 100 patients will go into dengue hemorrhagic fever. And for then, 400 will have simple dengue fever and around 500 will have viral syndrome like simple myalgias and they don't have any specific symptoms. And those 100 patients who are having dengue hemorrhagic fever, they will have sign of plasma leakage. This is again very important. What I mean to say by plasma leakage, usually one test that I told that temporary field test the, then the other thing that you can do at the bedside is just look at the CBC. If you see, let's, I start with hemoglobin. 
normally, for example, if someone is having hemoglobin of 12 at day one, WBC4 and platelet count 150. And if this person has platelet count next day is 140 and the other day, are you listening me, sir? Yes, yes, you are, yes. Yeah. So uh, the, the third day, we have 120, then 100, then 90, then 80. I don't be afraid of this fever because this is gradual. Loss. But if there is depletion of platelet count, more than 30 count, a rapid drop in platelet count, this means our patient may go into dengue hemorrhagic fever. Chances are there. Then... The second thing, hemoglobin, there will be heme concentration, as Dr. Bilkis was telling. And remember, once there is endothelial gap, the platelet count is due, low due to antiplatelet antibodies, due to bone marrow suppression. And the third thing is leakage. This leakage will lead to loss of pl plasma volume. And ultimately, you can check on blood pressure with reduced pulse pressure. Again, if pulse pressure is below 30, let's, for example, normal pulse pressure should be 120 by 80 millimeter of mercury, mean 40. But if someone is having below 30, again, we should be alert that our patient may go into leaky phase. And if it is below 20, it means our patient is definitely going into leaky phase. Along with this, the third thing is WBC. WBC initially fall down. Usually, these, these are the first cell that start increasing. But at the same time, WBC are, start in, uh, are going to increase, but platelet are going down. This means our patient is going into leaky phase. This is the time where you have to be extra careful. You have to give calculated fluid because mostly, now I will come, like if someone is having hematocrit, normally usually, 37 to 43, if this hematocrit increase by 20%. So let for example, hematocrit value is 50. So you should give and pulse pressure below 20, immediate give normal saline. Fluid of choice is crystallite normal saline. Don't give water because patient is in leaky phase. This fluid will go into third space like uh, interstitial space, and patient may have ascites, pleural fusion. So here you need to give crystallite. If pulse pressure does not improve, give 500 mil of another shot of normal saline. Again, doesn't improve, then this patient need colloids. And we have colloids in two forms. Like one is dextran 40. Normally, this should be given over half hour to one hour. There's no need to give very slow. If you give it very slowly, it will not, not serve the purpose. So we have to give this colloidal solution over one hour. And if pulse pressure comes up, then you will go again to your normal routine. Again, remember, during leaky phase, you have to calculate fluid very meticulously. For example, during the leaky phase usually start at day fifth, sixth or seventh and last for about 48 hours. Remember, it can start as early as day three. So here you have to see a few things. For example, I will go into the scenarios. For example, your patient having poor pulse, skin normal, temperature cold, capillary fill test more than two seconds and pulse pressure less than 20 and hematocrit increase and urine output. Urine output is also another very important sign, usually less than 0 0.5, 0 0.5 mil per kg per hour. But if it is below 0.5 or minimum to 0.25 mil per kg per hour, this patient need fluid therapy in the form of bolus, as I have said, that give normal saline. The next is that pulse volume again poor, hai. hematocrit start decreasing once you have given, and urine output still low. So what to do here? 
again, you need to give. No, remember, I have told hematocrit value 50 leaky phase, but this hematocrit value, if dropped rapidly from 50 to let's 30, this means your patient has bled. Now, this is the patient. This, please clear this point. If hematocrit value rapidly fall from 50 to 30 or 35, this means our patient has internal bleed. So this is the patient where you need to give blood transfusion. Now, again, hematocrit reduced, but urine output increased to more than one mil per kg. It means your patient is in recovery phase. And or in a dengue hemorrhagic fever. Again, if pulse pressure is reduced below 20, metocrit reduced, urine output increased, here along with normal saline, you need to give dextron 40 along with furosemide midway and do X-ray chest as well. Usually fluid uh, resuscitation with crystallite, push with normal saline 20 mil per kg body weight, and you can repeat with 10 mil per kg weight and dextron 40, 10 mil per kg or one hour. Remember, pulse should be palpable. And if there is tachycardia, you need to continue crystallite. Normally, fluid, total fluid is equal to maintenance plus 5% deficit. Remember, this includes both IV as well as oral fluid. And this amount need to be given over 24 to 48 hours. And here we usually keep normal body weight as a 50 kg, standard body weight. Whether it is 70, 80, we usually keep 50 kg as a standard. If weight below 50, then we need to. That I tell you. For first 10 kg, remember fluid is 100 mil per kg. So for 100 mil, so 100 is multiplied by 10 is equal to 1 liter. For second 10 kg, fluid is 50 mil per kg. So 10 into 50 is equal to 500. So total fluid for first 20 kg is 1 and half liter. For example, if 30 kg weight, uh, 50 kg, the remaining balance is 20 mil per kg. So 20 into 30 is equal to 600. So total fluid is 4,600 mil. For example, if body weight is 22 kg, for first 20 kg is one and a half liter, the balance is two kg. So that, that two kg is multiplied by 20 mil. As I have told that 20 multiplied by remaining body weight. If weight is 40, I will 20 multiply by 20. 20 first 20 has a one and a half liter. The next will have weight according to 20 mil. Ke se aapne usko multiply karna hai. Or jo balance body weight hai, wo 50 mil per kg body weight. Ke se aapne karna hai. Jo bhi, whatsoever the weight. 50 kg. So 50 ko aap multiply kar denge, 50 se around two and a half liter. So overall, jo humne deficit calculate kiya, wo 46, 40 mil banta hai for 50 kg person and jo, jo deficit tha 5% body weight ka, wo 2500 mil hai. For example, 22 kg ke liye, humne jo unka deficit banta hai, wo 1100 mil banta hai. Aur jo total fluid jo humne calculate kiya for first 10 kg 100 mil for next 10 kg 50 mil per kg and the next 2 kg is 20 mil into 2 so along around 15 40 plus 1100 is equal to 26 40 so this is this way we can calculate usually initially there is no shock during first two days and there is no leakage you can give fluid freely how much normally I recommend that give the normal maintenance more replacement if there is vomiting or diarrhea. Usually patient have either diarrhea or vomiting, there you need to give extra fluid. And give electrolyte solution, not plain as I have already told. Then 
दो फर्स्ट बोलर्स के बाद आपने दो बोलर्स से लाइन के देने के बाद ऑलवेज कंसीडर कोलाइड सॉल्यूशन और कोलाइड में हमारे पास रिमेंबर कि वी हैव कोलाइडल सॉल्यूशन डेक्सट्रॉन 40 आर स्टार्च 6 पीपल आर गिविंग अदर लाइक हेमेक्सिल दे आर नॉट दैट गुड इन डेंगू फीवर यूजुअली लुक फॉर साइन ऑफ लीकिंग एंड प्लेटलेट ड्रॉपिंग द अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट if if i exactly remember in 2011 even if platelet count were 50000 people used to come to us and say please give platelet to my patient even i have seen the threat one of my patient came to me uh, during my round that was the first day of uh, sri lankan team doctor my patient is having 30000 platelet count please give platelet i said to him that your patient don't need platelet uh, he is in a good shape and he is in recovery he said if something happened to my patient i will fire you so this was the threat at that time one threat was from patient other threat was from media aaj 50 log platelet na marne ki wajah se mar gaye doctor ki nahli platelet nahi diye this was the but remember these platelet don't have any role in the management until unless our patient like patient is bleeding platelet count is below 10000 or you can increase up to 20000 and your patient if your patient need surgery then you need to build up platelet above 50000 for example if a pregnant lady need c section or a patient develop acute appendicitis and patient need emergency surgery there you need to increase the platelet above 50000 there you need mega kits <clears throat> and the 20 to 25% colloid and 10 to 15% patient need bleed as i have told that if there is rapid fall of hematocrit you need to give after colloid you need to give if at all is the blood only 0.4% patient need platelet so with that usually three doses of dextran 40 can be given in 24 hours and five doses of starch 6% during 24 hours remain in circulation for much longer time in comparison with normal saline so with that i will finish so that we can have question answer session and we can discuss these thing in detail uh, thank you very uh, much professor khalid before we start the session thank answer, you very much just uh, i will request professor munir he is a virologist and bacteriologist to let us know about different uh, uh, danger of the uh, different strain professor munir professor munir are you there professor mohammad munir yes i am there sir sir thank you sir yes i am there sir bukhari sahab ji sir is he the very learned colleagues have already talked about the you see the management and the pathogenesis i will just add a couple of things as i already have been said that there are four zero types of dengue virus it is a rna virus which is having a single stranded rna gene the only thing which i have to add is that during the 2011 epidemic under the chairmanship of uh, professor asad aslam there was a question you see people have talked about the secondary infection and the primary infection and it is well known that if you see you have primary infection with one serotype and it is followed by another serotype the chances of severe disease they are much more than with only one type of virus so at that time the question on the agenda was whether we are having one or two serotypes in the society at lahore and i am sure you are part of, you are part of that study we collected about 
suspected cases of dengue and we got the serotyping from CDC in USA and we came up with the result that in our society there was only one type of dengue virus at that time. So we are quite confident the chances of secondary infection will be less because will will be less because there was only one serotype. So I will add only a couple of things. The people are so learned that I feel you see methodas are little apprehensive you see this Sri Lankan team when they came in the most important a couple of things which they mentioned that you should always keep an eye on the hematocrit. If starts if it starts rising, that's the time the patient is going into leakage. Now I will say only a few words about the why the secondary infection is more severe than which is usually of a different type. That is, you see, there is a phenomena called antibody enhancement. That is the body which is infected with one type of virus. It has already antibodies. And when you see the second type of the dengue serotype comes in, instead of neutralizing, you see, the second virus, it promotes the entry of the more and more virus into the macrophage. And that leads to the production of the, you see, this. Uh, interferon and the tumor necrosis factor alpha and the interleukins, especially the interleukin 2, which create the havoc, you see. You see, the rest of the things, if they have any questions, you see the part. Thank you so much. Uh, before answer. I start the ask, answer and question, Professor Amir is the head of the Department of Children and Professor Vajia is there. Uh, anybody from you can ask the uh, prevalence of uh, dengue fever in the children in your departments? Professor Meer? Uh, okay, now we start the uh, very uh, thankful to Arun Singh. Welcome in our session. You are also our student from King Edward Medical University. Uh, Arun, can you ask a question? Dr. Arun is a is there Dr. Arun? Arun Kumar is our student from King Edward Medical University and nowadays he is in United States of America and he is from Nepal. Arun, can you, up? Arun, yes. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, no question from my side. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Arun, we want to let you know and we are proud of you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> So there is a one question that NS1 antigen detect uh, then one genotype, any similar test available for other genotype. Uh, I think so uh, our microbiologist uh, will give a definite answer, but as far as I know, this NS1 is the structure. If you see the structure of uh, this flavivirus, this is, there are two type of uh, protein, one are structural other are non-structural protein this ns1 is not related but den one it is related with all the types so ns1 is non-structural protein one that is present in the blood and we detect it earliest so that is why ns1 antigen is given the name so this is the same for other genotype as far as i know that there were a study in 2012 uh, from alumni ball medical college where it was seen and the sample was sent to UK and it was seen that we have other genotype like genotype 2, 3, 4, all genotypes were present in Lahore. That's why we have scanty infection. If I remember in 2006, whatsoever the admitted patient was 65 in Gangaram. I did not saw even a single hemorrhage and I was wondering, Hemorrhage कह रहे हैं किताब में भी hemorrhagic fever है कोई hemorrhage नहीं है simple सा rash है when 2008 came in we saw few uh, hemorrhage in our patient and in 2010 
and then 11 we saw large number of patients this time the ek aur important point hai jo main highlight karna chahta hu dr bilkis will agree up till now we have uh, about uh, our all four uh, five wards are flooded with patient of dengue fever in jana hospital even in my private, private practice around more than 200 patient i have seen in last two weeks the one thing that is different from 2006, 8, and 9, 10, 11 epidemic is the involvement of liver. My own study from 2006 till uh, 10 showed that 62% patient may have deranged liver enzyme. But usually what was only 3% patient were having more than five times deranged liver enzyme. But nowadays what I am seeing that more or less all the patient, more or less all the patient, around above 95% patient, they are having SGPT 150, 200, 300. And I have seen patient, one of our senior colleague, she's professor of biochemistry and her mother came in and her SGPT was 1500. And day before yesterday, I admitted patient with SGPT, SGOT, 2300. So I am wondering okay, what is experience Dr. Bilkis will elaborate more because she's also seeing more and more patient. And um, another, uh, before we, we're going to- uh, 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 Professor uh, Amir Ijaz, can you uh, discuss about the liver function test and other tests in the patient? Lazam, can you give me the mic? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. G, uh, thank you very much. G, sir. G, uh, Professor Amir Ijaz, then Professor Munir, I will uh, give you the uh, mic to you. Professor Amir Ijaz. Uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, for uh, asking for my input. Actually, the, the increase in uh, these transaminases, which is which are ALT and AST, previously called uh, SGPT and SGOT, I think we should um, uh, now adopt new names because the older names were not Islamic names. <laughs> the, the, we, have, um, <laughs> we have to follow the new, new names. And uh, these, uh, these, are, these are increased in any fever, any, small, any slightest insult to the liver that will cause a, a release of these transaminases. Now, there may be, there are many mechanisms for their release of these two enzymes. One is the <clears throat> fever itself. Fever itself is a very important cause of uh, release of these enzymes. And secondly, uh, the drugs which are given to them, even two tablets of paracetamol can sometimes cause a release of these enzymes. So it is not necessarily a, a severe damage or moderate damage to the liver. Very, very it important. is just because of the minor insults. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, our friend from Afghanistan, Dr. Malik Zai, can you ask a question? Professor, I'm, uh, Professor Rashid Saab, you can ask, uh, sir, okay, sorry, sir, Professor uh, Munir Saab, yes. Professor Munir. Yes, you're responding to the, the you see, the comment given by Dr. Khalil Mahmood. Let me inform you that uh, the study which we conducted in 2011 or 12, I'm yes, not sir, really I was sure. also co-author, sir. Aap bhi uske co-author te, we sent about 400 cases of suspected dengue and out of them you see no case was of dengue one three or four it was all dengue oh, two two and uh, this yes, data sir, was shared with professor Faisal Mazoum. initially he was very skeptical but later on he was a part of the study and uh, you see he was one of the co-authors of this uh, study so i'm not very sure about the type zero types prevalent in Pakistan right now. But at that time, and this analysis was not done in Pakistan. The PCR was done in, you see, the Center for Disease. Of America, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know, uh, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And hey, all professor, the results are yes, sir. still professor available Amir? on the website. Yes, sir. Uh, professor Amir, uh, can you, uh, I have one question from you, Professor Amir. From head of the Department of Children, uh, can you uh, let us know about the dengue fever in the children? Dr. Amir? Dr. 
Amir. Okay. Bachia is here. Professor Khaled. Yes. Professor Khaled, uh, uh, in, uh, from Azad Kashmir. What is the uh, uh, type of dengue fever? What is the type of strain in uh, Azad Jammu Kashmir, Muzaffarabad? Professor Khaled Awan. Okay, Professor Khalid, come on, you can. Uh, Professor Rashid, you are Sir, asking. Sir, I'm trying to unmute myself. Ji, sir, Professor Khalid. Uh, sir, uh, sir uh, at, at the moment, we don't have. Hamari yaan kaun sir dengue fever hai, sir? Mudafrabad mein. Uh, sir, we don't have uh, this uh, PCR data with us. Okay, at the moment. PCR. We don't don't have. Aap usko kahe na, sir, hamari PCR lab ko, Dr. ममताज साहब को के वो हमें बताया कि हमारे कुछ सैंपल भेजें कि हमारे किस तरह का टाइप का वो है सर जी सर वी आर नाउ डूइंग इट बट एट द मोमेंट वी डोंट हैव मच ऑफ मच ओके प्रोफेसर आमिर प्रोफेसर राशिद मुझे टाइम देना मैं बताऊं आपको जी सर कैन आई रिस्पोंड टू दिस क्वेश्चन सर जी सर मुलाजिम साहब जी सर अह दीदी this test is not freely available in pakistan it's a very costly test you see nowadays the people are working on it aur iski ek test ki jo keemat hai na agar pura jo iske primer wagaira mangaye jaye aur if pcr ki keemat is more than 50 dollars around 70 80 dollar so i'm sure ke ye jo hai na shayad ye jo lahor mein nipchi wale kar rahe hain kuch लेकिन ये फ्रीली अवेलेबल नहीं है दैट्स व्हाई वी हैड टू सेंड दिस स्पेसिमेन टू यूएसए ओके सर प्रोफेसर राशिद काफी मेगा टेस्ट है सर प्रोफेसर राशिद बिफोर मैडम बल्किस बिफोर डाटा राशिद यू आंसर द क्वेश्चन थैंक यू ब्लेस्ड प्रोफेसर मुलाजिम साहब और पहले तो बहुत शुक्रिया इतना अच्छा वेबिनार और टॉपिक पर मौका अरेंज करने का इसमें एक क्वेश्चन है और एक थोड़े एडिशन है फिजियोलॉजी के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से क्वेश्चन uh, तो ये है कि ये जो नेगेटिव एंटीजन टेस्ट आता है बहुत सारे पेशेंट हम देख रहे हैं ऑफ कोर्स वीक वन में एंटीजन को पॉजिटिव आना चाहिए उसके बाद एंटीबॉडी तो रिपीटेडली टेस्ट नेगेटिव आता है और बिल्कुल प्योरली पिक्चर होती है डेंगू की इस नेगेटिव टेस्ट की काज बता दें और दूसरा मैं ऐड करना चाहता हूँ कि बहुत लेबॉरिटीज जब आप सी उन्हें लिखते हैं तो बहुत कुछ दे देते हैं हेमेटोक्रिट साथ नहीं देते अगर अलग से ना लिखे तो उसका एक फार्मूला भी है बहुत सिंपल एम सी को आरबीसी काउंट से मल्टीप्लाई करके टेन से डिवाइड करके तो वो फिजिशियंस घबराए नहीं वो तो उस फार्मूले से कैलकुलेट कर सकते हैं वेरी इजीली तो ये तो एडिशन में नजर आता है आप इसका जवाब दें प्रोफेसर सर सबसे पहले तो मुनीर साहब को सलाम करते हुए उनकी परमिशन से आई वुड सलाम सर सर आई वु लाइक आई वुड लाइक टू Uh, sir, I would like to uh, say uh, comment upon something. <clears throat> Munir Saab would agree with me that uh, himself, being our teacher, and his teachers, and our senior teachers, they would tell us treat the patient and not the investigations. So number one is that over the years, it would it is just common sense which would tell us that as Munir Saab investigated in 2011 along with the esteemed Jeeva, team with me, with me. I was also Malazim Buhari Saab and uh, as uh, Professor uh, Mahum, uh, Professor Asad Pesit, Aslam uh, and Asad Aslam Saab and very senior people that there was one serotype sero, uh, uh, which was prevalent at that time. Now over the years it's just common sense that the uh, ads is common for all the serotypes and i still remember one statement which professor uh, faisal masood saab made at that time as as uh, professor muni said that he was very skeptical about the number of uh, serotypes at that time he made one statement ke pehli dafa ek dengi ek machhar kaatega dengi hoga bach jaoge dusri dafa kaatega to severe hogi teesri dafa kaatega to aur severe hogi hemorrhagic phase mein jaoge aur chauthi dafa काटेगा तो मर जाओगे तो ही वॉज यू नो ही वॉज वेरी यू नो श्योर अबाउट दी सिंह और ये मुझे डायलॉग उनका बहुत अच्छी तरह याद है इन वन ऑफ हिज चौक्स विद अस सो आई थिंक दैट दिस इज एक्चुअली ओवर द लास्ट वन डी केट वॉट वी आर सींग ये रहा है इंडेमिक तो सर ये है एंड इट हैजीटेडली कॉज 
अप सर्जेस ड्यूरिंग द रेनी सीजन आपने देखा होगा पिंडी में कई अप सर्जेस आई लाहौर में आई बट दिस इज़ वन कैटास्ट्रोफिक वन और द रीज़न जो खालिद महमूद साहब क्योंकि वो क्लिनिकल फ्लोर पे काम कर रहे हैं मैं कर रही हूँ राशिद साहब कर रहे हैं अब्दुल खालिद साहब कर रहे हैं वी आर ऑल ऑब्जर्विंग दैट दीज पेशेंट्स आर मोर इन द क्रिटिकल फेज मोर इन द लीकी फेज एंड मोर सवेर सो डेफिनेटली दे आर हैव बीन इन्फेक्टेड बाई मल्टीपल तो ये सर ये क्लिनिकली हमें बता रहे एंड दिस इज फूड फॉर थॉट फॉर रिसर्च जैसे बुखारी साहब हमें हमेशा इंकरेज करते हैं रिसर्च आई थिंक इट्स टाइम वी शुड मेक अ मल्टी सेंट्रिक रिसर्च और इस फोरम पे आई के एक आजाद कश्मीर से हो जाए दो तीन सेंटर हॉस्पिटल वी हैव माई सेल्फ फ्रॉम किंग एडवर्ड डॉक्टर खालिद वही नजर आ रहे हैं मुझे फ्रॉम गुलाब देवी सो वाई नॉट वी मेक अ मल्टी डिसिप्लिन मल्टी सेंट्रिक सेंट बहुत जरूरी बात है वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट ट्रांस कैन यू है नी सर कैन है नी जी जी प्रोफेसर एक चीज है जो एक एक फिनोमिना होता है सर एक फिनोमिना होता है ब्लाइंड स्पॉट ठीक है जहाँ हमारे फोविया के जो रेटनल सेल्स सारे फोविया में डिप करते हैं और एक मेरा राइट साइड पर ब्लाइंड स्पॉट है एक मेरा लेफ्ट साइड पर ब्लाइंड स्पॉट है एक तो ये होता है ना ब्लाइंड स्पॉट वन इज द फिनोमिना ऑफ ब्लाइंड स्पॉट व्हाट वी हैव अ टेंडेंसी इज सर दैट व्हेन कोविड कम्स वी जस्ट सी कोविड एंड वी फोगेट अबाउट द अदर पॉसिबल कॉजेज ऑफ फीवर इन आर सोसाइटी एंड आर कम्युनिटी सेम इज ट्रू नाउ इट इज कि अब डेंगी आया है तो वी आर क्लोजिंग आर आईज ऑन कोविड अब आप कल की न्यूज है कि दे आर यू नो सॉर्ट ऑफ सॉफ्टनिंग वो जो होते हैं रिस्ट्रिक्शन जो होती हैं सोशल रिस्ट्रिक्शन रिगार्डिंग कोविड क्या होगा कि डेंगी जरा नीचे आएगा मच्छरों के साथ जब सर्दी आएंगी तो कोविड दोबारा बढ़ जाएगा और तीसरी चीज जो सर ब्लाइंड स्पॉट में है जो हमें कभी नहीं भूलनी चाहिए दैट इज अदर कॉजेज ऑफ फीवर एंटेरिक फीवर सर टू बर्कलोसिसिद वहीद साहब मेरे सामने है कोविड के दिनों में भी टू बर्कलोसिस उसके ऊपर हमने ब्लाइंड स्पॉट किया हुआ था सो वी हैव टू एक्सक्लूड द अदर और सर एक और चीज आई वुड शेयर एंड आई डोंट नो वट खालिद महमूद साहब हैज टू से ऑन दिस बट वी आर सींग पेशेंट्स विद कोविड प्लस एंटेरिक देन कोविड विद हेपेटाइटिस ई एक पेशेंट सर हु पास्ट अवे डे बिफोर ये वॉज अ पेशेंट शी वॉज अ प्रेगनेंट लेडी ट्वेंटी सिक्स ईयर्स ऑफ एज है डेंगी एंड ऑन टॉप ऑफ दैट शी वॉज इन फर्मिनेंट हेपेटिक फेलियर वी चेक फॉर हेपेटाइटिस ई इस पर मुनीर साहब शायद लाइट थ्रो करें बेहतर कि वॉज इट द क्रॉस रिएक्शन ऑफ द एंटीबॉडीज दैट वी सॉल अ पॉजिटिव हेपेटाइटिस ई और वॉज इट रेली विच कुड बी Uh, an underlying hepatitis E along with uh, dengue that the patient went into hepatic fulminant hepatic failure and we could not save her. Or sir, either a call baat aapki jada se. I know I am taking more time. We have not touched the aspect of a pregnant. We have talked talked about infants and probably I, I would request uh, our pediatrician Dr. Vijaya to talk Dr. about Amir, the infant Dr. behavior Amir, of infants. Professor, Professor Amir is there from pediatrics. Professor Mom Amir. Ah, we would love to uh, hear from him. But sir, one thing we are missing is they are the pregnant ladies. सर सो प्लीज प्रेगनेंसी में इसका एक बहुत है जैसे अब हेपेटाइटिस में या कोई भी कॉज ऑफ एक्लेम्सिया में व्हाट आर एम एज के जल्दी इसको डिलीवर करो इंड्यूस करो डिलीवरी इंड्यूस करो एंड आइदर डू इट बाय सी सेक्शन और इंड्यूस इट लेकिन डेंगी में वी हैव टू बी वेरी यू नो केयरफुल अबाउट इट और आई होप कोई अगर होता हमारे पास शायद हो कोई गायनी में So, so I'm uh, Professor Dr. Amir, uh, working uh, in the pediatrics at uh, BVH, uh, Kailasam Medical College, Bahawalpur. Uh, so I have a uh, um, uh, few points uh, about the uh, this uh, the dengue. 
uh, although uh, we are uh, uh, we are in the process of preparation and we are also screening the patients for the dengue but still this is not very common in bahawalpur oh. up till now we, we are getting sporadic cases but we are mentally prepared over here and uh, we are uh, setting our wards separately uh, still uh, we are we are continuing to screen the patients as well but still uh, the proportion of the cases is uh, quite low uh, over here in the bahawalpur uh, but we are on the alert uh, so i want to say uh, uh, two points one latest uh, i was uh, uh, going through uh, the parameters of the platelets mpv mpv is a very important indicator for the severity of the covid like mpv is uh, below 10 and above 7 so we should be on alert and if it is uh, between 7 and 5 uh it is a moderate uh, disease the patient is going to uh, more severity and if the mpv is less than 5 it is very much significant and similarly the uh, distribution weights of the platelets is also important uh, in assessing the severity of the uh, dengue fever uh, the second point uh, which is uh, thought provoking uh, as the ward is proceeding to ward the vaccination so due to covid or due to some other reasons uh our attention uh, was not uh, on the dengue but this was uh, one of the thing which has been missed and uh, uh, i would suggest that uh, we should also think on that uh, the vaccination uh, that is one of the important prospective although uh, the requirement for vaccination the screening is must uh, if the person is having already antibodies uh, igg is positive so he will be vaccinated otherwise who will not be having antibodies he will not be vaccinated so this is one of the point we should also think over uh, this point as well so thank these you. are uh, few submission from my side thank you thank you dr sadia adnan dr sadia anan can you uh, answer the question about the uh, dengue in the pregnant woman dr sadia adnan okay okay professor khaled mahmood सर यहाँ पे एक दो क्वेश्चन है एक तो आवर वर्दी प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर खालिद भाई साहब ने पूछा व्हाट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ राइजिंग मेटोक्रेट एंड डिक्रीजिंग मेटोक्रेट तो एज आई हैव टोल्ड इन माय इनिशियल टॉक दैट इनिशियली ड्यू टू हीम कंसंट्रेशन मेटोक्रेट स्टार्ट राइजिंग इफ देर इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट राइज इन मेटोक्रेट बिकॉज एट द सेम टाइम लीकेज हो रही होती है तो दिस इज अ So more than 20% metocrit rise let's uh, if someone is having 40 initially and the very very next day you come in the ward and you see cbc and where you see metocrit 50 so it means your patient has heme concentration your patient has leakage so ab aapne us leakage ko check karne ke liye zaruri aapke paas teen parameters hain ek to immediately aap blood pressure check kare pulse pressure will be low आप अल्ट्रासाउंड करवा सकते हैं एक्सरे चेस्ट करवा सकते हैं अल्ट्रासाउंड पे इवन फाइव मिल फ्लोड भी होगा तो वो डिटेक्ट कर देगी सो दैट इज मोर सेंसिटिव देन इवन एक्सरे चेस्ट सो ये है और दिस इज द पेशेंट वेयर यू हैव टू गिव क्रिस्टलाइट सॉल्यूशन फॉलोड बाय कोलाइड इफ नीडेड अब दूसरा जो सर का क्वेश्चन है कि डिक्रीजिंग मेटोक्रिट अब ये फिफ्टी था अब उससे अगले दिन आप आए या सुबह आपने देखा तो 50 था मेटोक्रेट शाम को आए तो 30 है इट मींस योर पेशेंट हैज ब्लीडिंग दिस इज द पेशेंट वेयर यू नीड क्योंकि हीमोग्लोबिन कई दफा निचली फॉल नहीं करती है मेटोक्रेट इज मोर सेंसिटिव सो दिस इज द पेशेंट वेयर यू नीड अलोंग विद क्रिस्टलाइड और क्लाइड ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन जहां तक प्लेटलेट की बात है आई डू एग्री विद माय वर्दी कोलीग कि दीज आर विद साइन ऑफ स्वेरिटी बट जब लीकी फेज हो रही होती है बिकॉज प्लेटलेट साइज स्मॉल होता है वो एंडोथिलियल गैप के साथ साथ वो ड्रेन आउट हो रहा था सो so, पहला साइन ऑफ रिकवरी जब हम सीबीसी में देखते हैं बींग फिजिशियन मे बी आई एम रॉन्ग लेकिन वो जो है कि डब्ल्यू बी सी स्टार्ट राइजिंग प्लेटलेट स्टार्ट डिक्रीजिंग वो डिक्रीज जो है वो लीकेज की वजह से हो रहे होते हैं सो so, जैसे ही लीकी फेज बंद होती है डब्ल्यू बी सी नॉर्मल आ जाता है तो प्लेटलेट लैग बिहाइंड सो प्लेटलेट तो कुछ वो ही आपको इंटरेक्ट और एक और साइन ऑफ इंप्रूवमेंट है वो ये है कि हमारे पेशेंट अगर आपको राउंड पे गए और पेशेंट कह रहा है डॉक्टर साहब खारिश हो रही है पांचवें या छठे दिन तो समझ जाइए दिस इज आल्सो एन अदर इंटरेक्ट साइन ऑफ रिकवरी योर पेशेंट इज 
इम्प्रूविंग सो दीज आर दीचर्स के जो मैं हाईलाइट करना चाह रहा था बाकी डॉक्टर बिल्कीस ने पढ़ा राइटली के हमें ए और ई देखना चाहिए ये जो पेशेंट जिनके मैं बात कर रहा था कि अब फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड इनका मैंने ए और ई दोनों पेशेंट के करवाए हैं इनके नॉर्मली आई नो दैट बीइंग गैस्ट्रोनटोलॉजिस्ट के uh, हर पेशेंट में तो आप नहीं करवाते लेकिन जिनके भी मोर देन फाइव टाइम डिरेंज थे उनके मैंने ए और ई करवाए प्राइवेट सेक्टर में क्योंकि दीज आर अफोर्डिंग क्लास एज यू नो इन हॉस्पिटल वी आर फिर प्रॉब्लम नहीं कर सकते तो वहां पे ये इश्यू था लेकिन ये क्योंकि इस पे जो और इंटरनेशनल स्टडीज भी हैं पैरास्टामोल यस ऑफ कोर्स यू आर राइट डॉक्टर साहब ने कमेंट किया कि जी पैरास्टामोल की स्मार्ट डोज भी दें तो दैट कैन इंक्रीज द लिवर एंजाइम यूजुअली टॉक्सिक डोज ऑफ पैरास्टामोल इज 7.5 ग्राम सो जो हम यूजुअल डोज दे रहे होते हैं दो गोलियां वन ग्राम बनती हैं यूजली उनसे लिवर एंजाइम इतने डिरेंज नहीं होते कि पेशेंट के मोर देन टेन टाइम डिरेंज हो जाए सो ये एक मेरा कमेंट था मे बी आई एम रॉन्ग लेकिन वर्दी स्पीकर इस पे कमेंट कर सकते हैं मुझे मुझे कमेंट देने की इजाजत है प्रोफेसर सर 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 इनफैक्ट आई वॉज ए पार्ट ऑफ द a number of presentations given by the the sri lankan group i am not a treating physician but why i still remember and i fully agree with the professor khalid mahmood they were saying one thing keep an eye on the hematocrit and if the hematocrit starts increasing that is the time you should become you see vigilant second thing on vaccination in fact you see the cdc and the american authorities have approved the vaccine only in 2021 and it is recommended for all the persons who have been already infected what i am saying already infected and show the presence of igg antibody it is not recommended for those people who कोई उनकी हिस्ट्री नहीं है या उसमें आईजीजी एंटीबॉडीज नहीं है यानी जिनको इन्फेक्शन नहीं हुई क्योंकि अगर उनमें दे दी जाए तो ये इट एक्ट एज एन एडिशनल इन्फेक्शन एंड लीड्स टू दैट एंटीबॉडी डिपेंडेंट एनहांसमेंट ये मेरा अभी बहुत अच्छा इस पे कमेंट किया है सुनोफी वालों ने सुनोफी पासर ने एक लाइव वैक्सीन फॉर एडल्ट बिटवीन नाइन एंड फोर्टी फाइव इयर्स ऑफ एज और उसमें ये था क्योंकि प्रॉब्लम यही है वैक्सीनेशन के साथ कि ऐसी वैक्सीन चाहिए जो पैन जीनोटाइपिक हो अब अनफॉर्चुनेटली क्योंकि एक जीनोटाइप के साथ इम्यूनिटी होती है तो इसीलिए जितनी भी वैक्सीन अभी तक एक ही डेंगा वैक्स के नाम से वैक्सीन हमारे मुल्क में आई थी अवेंटस वालों ने लॉन्च की है बट दैट इज रिकमेंडेड फॉर एडल्ट बिटवीन नाइन एंड फोर्टी फाइव एंड आई हंड्रेड परसेंट एग्री विद प्रोफेसर मुनीर साहब अवर वर्दी सीनियर को लीग के ये उन लोगों में देनी है दोज हुव ऑलरेडी गॉट इन्फेक्शन सो फर्स्ट टाइम नहीं देनी बिकॉज इट विल एक्ट एज ए Antigen. Thank you. Uh, before I, uh, 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 madam, I would like to ask the question of Dr. Isra Zaman from uh, Iraq. If you want to ask the question, Dr. Isra Zaman from. Okay, G, madam. डॉक्टर सर ये डेंग वैक्स की चूंकि बात हुई है वैक्सीनेशन की सर ये बहुत ज़्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट है जो मुनीर साहब ने जिक्र किया है कि आईजीजी के बगैर डेंग वैक्स नहीं देनी दे दिस वाज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय सनोफी एंड द फर्स्ट फेज थ्री ट्रायल वर कंडक्टेड इन ब्राज़ील एंड फिलिपींस ऑन स्कूल गोइंग चिल्ड्रेन and they found out that wo unki primary infection or secondary infection ko rule out nahi kiya gaya tha and they found out that that resulted in later on increased um, uh, prevalence of hospitalization to ye hai aur sir dusri mein i would still like to stick back to what i was saying kyunki bahut important comrade dr salma bhi idhar hai bahut important component is our pregnant females i want to complete my statement that please in dengue we do not induce a uh, 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 induction of labor we try to pass those 48 hours of critical phase if the patient has not come in the critical phase 
it is an indication pregnancy is an indication for admission and monitoring just like in infants because they can go into critical phase at a risk at a higher risk for going into critical phase or phir wo 48 hours guzar ke jo aap uh, uh, koshish karenge that would be of normal labor so agar normal labor mein koi obstruction jaise aa rahe to phir obviously uh, the gynecologist would know better the indications for going for c section lekin the uh, hai aur uh, usme bhi ye baat yaad rakhni hai ke 48 hours jitna hum lamba guzar sakte hain isme wo wala nahi hai thank you very much induction of labor thank you very much dr bilkis thank you very much uh, point, pointing out the very important thing i have one question with you uh the, as some uh, day ago uh, there was advertisement of some medicine uh who, the medicine can increase the platelet is it correct papaya wali sir yes nahi ye wo calicra sir calicra ki baat kar rahe hain sir ji 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 yes remember this is short lived disease ye wahi hai jaise papite ke patte pachar rahe ka jawab tha lahor mein so uh, there is because this is short lived platelet normal hote hain we have treated dr bilkis will agree as a physician i have treated patient in gangaram even at zero platelet content zero. have bleed yeah. they don't have bleed so these platelets are not abnormal these are because of suppression and due to leaky phase jaise hi wo leaky phase out hoti hai very next day platelet start rising aur ab agle within 2 or 3 days wohi number normal hota hai जो कि पेशेंट का बिफोर इलनेस होता है बिल्कुल एज ए पैथोलॉजिस्ट आई विल आल्सो कमेंट ऑन इट दैट दिस इज नॉट ड्यू टू द बोन मैरो डिप्रेशन दिस इज ड्यू टू अगेन द लीकी फेज एंड ड्यू टू अदर फैक्टर्स यू डिस्क्राइब डॉक्टर प्रोफेसर मुनीर एंड यू ट्यूमर नेक्रोसिंग फैक्टर एंड इंटरफेरॉन व्हिच आर गोइंग टू डिक्रीज द लेवल ऑफ प्लेटलेट एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द ऑडियंस एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द मुलाजिम साहब एक सवाल है छोटा सा अरे एक डॉलर लगेगा आप सवाल का सर <laughs> चले आप दो डॉलर ले लेना कोई बात नहीं ठीक है सर आई थिंक मे बी दियडिशन और प्रोफेसर खालिद महमूद कैन रिस्पॉन्ड टू माई क्वेश्चन आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू नो दिटी ऑफ द डिजीज हियर इन पाकिस्तान इन चिल्ड्रन विज अज द एडल्ट बच्चों में सवेरिटी ज्यादा है या कम professor amir can you answer dr wajid can respond very well because she is looking after a patient yes, as sir, far as i myself is concerned i am main is pe is tarah comment kar sakti hu sir because uh, we are uh, uh, professor wajia can definitely talk about children because she is working uh, as a core person in children hospital but at mayo hospital we are coming across more uh, both the uh, pediatric age uh, group by the two uh, departments of pediatric uh, pediatrics and the adult age group sir is is wave may we are seeing critical patients in both the groups so may it be repeated infections may it be uh, uh, so initially pehle ye aap uh, उसमें भी पढ़ेंगे जो रेफरेंसेस में पढ़ेंगे कि इन्फेंट्स में चांसेस ज्यादा होते हैं सर जो आपका पर्टिनेंट क्वेश्चन है कि हमें एडल्ट में भी इस वक्त हायर क्रिटिकल फेस मिल रही है एज अपोज टू व्हाट वी सॉ इन 2011 अच्छा आपने मल्टी सेंटर स्टडी की बात की थी आई एम नॉट प्रॉमिसिंग बट आई स्टिल हैव कनेक्शन विद द सीडीसी पीपल एंड आई विल टॉक टू द फोकल पर्सन इन इस्लामाबाद इफ ही एग्रीज i can offer my services as a moderator to get the genotyping from america if he says yes if he says yes i'll send the protocols to all those centers who get who, who want to involve sir dr belkis so, i will uh, participate kare tumhari sahab unko protocol bhej denge aur fir sample sir, collect kar ye add kar raha hu ke nih people are along with in this group and uh, they have uh, promise to make a multi uh, center uh, uh, nahi ach ka koi banda hai ji sir baithe hain jamshed sir jishan se baithe hain okay madam salma kundi ji sir se poocho na sir sir uh, professor salma kundi okay ji bismillahir rahmanir rahim it was a fascinating discussion and before i thank the speakers and the participants sabse pehle to main professor mulazim saab ka shukriya ada karti hu who's the moderator and who arranges all this for us 
Hats off to you, Mulazim Sab. And then I want to thank on behalf of PMA Kazi Wasik Sab. Kazi Wasik Sab, thank you for taking over thank the you, Kazi interview. Sahab, thank you, Kazi Sab. Kazi Sab, thank you so much. And uh, Kazi Sab, aap to president elect hai Samauke, which is the Confederation of Medical Association of Asia and Oceania. Uske behalf pe, and as treasurer of PMA, Aj Kesar Sab Nehe, who is the secretary general PMA, and myself. Let's take it up. Let's have press conferences. Hum fail kaha ho rahe hai. Ye machar kyu exist kar rahe hai, after all. Agar hum ne sirf COVID ke upar concentrate kar rahe hai, aur baakiyo bimariyan pe, joh humare kabu mein nahi hai, magar machar toh humare kabu mein ho nahi chahiye na? We should ask the health ministry, the health department, Involve the water and sanitation department ke after all aap log time pe sprays kyun nahi karte? Kyun aap ne puddles aur is kesam ki cheezen chhodi hui hain jin mein machron ki afzaish ho rahi hai. Matlab ye ordinary humara community medicine departments ko bhi mutaharak hona hai aur hum sab ne mutaharak hona hai because ye ek jihad hai. Ye to bhot maamuli cheez thi. We can't take care of the coronavirus unless we do uh, social distancing and wear masks and all that. But we can take care of a mosquito like Dr. Bilki said, and we should take care of it at government level and on war footing. Why should we be wasting our resources on dengue when we can take care of it at a very, very initial level? Anyway, my special thanks to Professor Khalid Mahmood Saab, Professor Bilki Shabir Saiba as usual, to Professor Munir Saab to Dr. Khalid Aman Saab, and to Dr. Arun Singh Saab and many participants whom I can't even name now because it will take a lot of time. And special thanks to Dr. Rashid Saab. His ayat today was very pertinent. It mentioned uh, the mosquito and that ayat in the Holy <laughs> Quran of the mosquito. Thank you so much. If there is uh, some mufasar over here, we me. can know what is the significance. Kya hai. Allah Paak ne mentioned kya hai. that means ye cheese very profound significance ki hai. And from this forum, I want to thank the government of Sri Lanka for sending their team to us a decade back who made the protocols for us and who guided us and put us on the right track. Thank you, Sri Lanka. And thank you all the participants and hope to see you next week. I am Dr. President. Thank you very much, uh, Mulazim Saab, for uh, conducting an excellent uh, webinar. And uh, it was more of an interactive session rather than uh, going through the uh, academic uh, presentation. So uh, it was a blessing in disguise. And uh, Madam Salma Kundi has raised a very pertinent point that we are all looking to the uh, hospital uh, cares and uh, you know the curative part of it. Uh, well, we have uh, literally failed in our uh, preventive uh, part of uh, dengue fever. Uh, we need to uh, have a three-pronged approach by the government and by the community. I mean, uh, we should have community awareness programs, we should have, uh, you know, uh, aggressive uh, media uh, uh, awareness uh, for the uh, general public and the community. And then, of course, the, uh, the mosquito eradication program needs to be, you know, very aggressively taken over by the government and the, uh, the uh, municipal committees. It is their duty to make these sprays, especially before the monsoon starts. And then, of course, the, uh, the clean, stagnant water uh, storage uh, part of it. So we need to uh, you know, work on that. And she has very uh, rightly said that on uh, the platforms of uh, PMA, we are definitely uh, getting on with it. We are uh, constantly knocking the uh, doors of the government and uh, uh, we'll keep doing it and uh, we'll be having more press conferences in order to have the community uh, the awareness uh, of this severity and uh, the uh, complications uh, of uh, dengue virus so uh, 
thank you madam uh, for all that uh, and last, thank you all the speakers sir, last question, professor khalid from you professor khalid <laughs> from uh, uh, gulab devi is asking what is the role sir, of usi pe main comment karne laga usi pe comment laga hu ki sir ne sawal puchha hai ki role of growth factor in severe dengue fever yes yes so as you know sir immune pathogenesis of dengue fever involves and antibody protection b cell and t cell response and various pro inflammatory and anti inflammatory cytokines like vascular endothelial growth factor f are potent permeability enhancing cytokines so sir you are right but mostly is thought to play a pivotal role in mediating plasma leakage in dengue hemorrhagic fever so ye it's very important but usually we don't have facilities in our most of our labs as a study purpose yes this is very important and if we can do a study on this factor this will be a very good study for future reference thank you very much dr ayub professor ayub you want to ask the question professor ayub professor of physiology sir thank you very much क्वेश्चन तो कोई नहीं बट कमेंट्स हैं कि आज का जो वेबिनार हुआ बाकी वेबिनार से मुख्तलिफ इसलिए था कि जस्ट लाइक स्लाइड एंड स्लीपिंग लाइक बैक बेंचर्स एटलीस्ट वी एक्टिवली पार्टिसिपेटेड इन द डिस्कशन दैट वाज मोर बेनिफिशियल फॉर अ पर्सन लाइक मी टू इज नॉट एक्शन एंड वी होप वी कंटिन्यू दिस सीरीज ऑफ वेबिनार इन फ्यूचर टू thank you sir okay. thank you very much. at the end i will request uh, once again professor sharma kundi president of pma uh, for the concluding remarks professor sharma kundi i will ask the request for okay uh, on behalf of everyone i thank all the participants especially the speakers who are dr khalid mehmood dr khalid duwan my dear professor balkis shabir sahib and dr munir sahib and obviously malazam sahib you are the host kazi sahib is the host i myself and the whole pma brothers are our hosts so i don't need to thank you all but it is a pleasure being with you every sunday i am not a clinician and i'm sure many people amongst us are not but we learn such a lot and we can guide the gps and now i'm going to encourage all the gps to join us but this dengue is behaving very strangely in aptabad which is a cold area and it is at 4000 feet mal hospital a teaching hospital attached to women medical college is full of dengue patients our dhq hospital has got kids the pediatric ward is full of dengue patients little kids have it it is bad we should work at eradicating mosquitoes every 3 months and it should be like a national priority now thank you all this forum and the webinars like this open up our uh, neurons and then we can think on other lines how to improve the system before i Allah bless you madam, and have a good time thank you madam before i conclude madam with the help of nih we are on behalf of this forum we are going to make a multi center team to investigate different uh, centers uh, type of uh, stains of the we will send these collect these samples we will send to nih and inh will perform free uh, screening of the uh, these uh, uh, stains dengue uh, dengue stains and hopefully inshallah uh, after few month we will be able to get the result and to publish the data on the behalf of uh, this uh, forum as a multi centric study in pakistan thank you very much i am really thank you uh, mulazam uh, sir can i sir. interrupt you for a minute please do include aptabad in it we'll send you the samples as well ji madam ji ji bilkul a main sab colleagues ka shukriya ada karta hu aur professor khalid mehmood professor khalid awan professor munir sahab aur madam bilkis aapka aur you always gave the wonderful uh, time to us and all the uh, audience national and international from nepal from afghanistan from iraq and thank you very much गॉड ब्लेस यू आज एक खुशखबरी भी ये है कि आज का जो दिन है आज के दिन हमारे प्यारे रसूल सल्ला वसलम का निका हुआ था हजरत खतीजतुल्कबरा का तो आज का दिन भी मुबारक था आप सबको मुबारक हो ये पूरा महीना मुबारक है हमारे पाक मोहम्मद का 
तो आज का दिन बहुत ही मुबारक है असला वरहमत लाबारक थैंक यू वेरी मच गॉड ब्लेस थैंक यू शुक्रिया अल्लाह 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 थैंक 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 यू 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 वेरी वेरी मच मच फ्रॉम पीएमए लाहौर एंड इकबाल मेडिकल कॉलेज सर बहुत बह